Using and selecting Pantone colors in Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Upon completion of this tutorial, the learner should be able to describe the purpose of the Pantone matching system and selection of Pantone colors for use in Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe InDesign. Users should also be able to select swatches for each application. The Pantone matching system is a color identification system developed in the early 1960s as a way to standardize ink colors for printing. Before the Pantone matching system, individual printing facilities had their own formulas or recipes for ink colors. The introduction of Pantone provided a numbered naming system and ratios of ink pigments to make colors uniform. If the history of Pantone is of interest to you, a designer named Karen Cabot has a YouTube channel containing several cheerful, informative videos. Just click on the link below. Pantone colors are used only when one color is needed for a design or when a specific color needs to be used for design in addition to CMYK, which is the four color process used for printing things such as full color, continuous tone photographs. For this tutorial, we'll concentrate on where to find Pantone swatches in three Adobe applications. Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Let's start with Photoshop. One way to access Pantone color swatch books in Photoshop is to click on the color picker in the bottom of the Photoshop Tools panel. Click on the foreground color and the color picker window will appear you will see several color spaces and respective numerical values represented in the color picker window. HSB, RGB, hexadecimal codes for the web, lab, and CMYK. Directly above lab color is a button called color libraries. When you click on this option, the window changes to color libraries and a drop down menu at the top will allow you to select which book you want to use to select specific colors. While there are several books to choose from, we're going to concentrate on Pantone Solid, Pantone CMYK, and Pantone Color Bridge. Pantone Solid is used when you have a specific color that will be printed using a process allowing for that specific color to be printed separately. Pantone solid colors may be printed alone, with other spot colors, or as a fifth color when printing in CMYK. Pantone CMYK is used when you want to specify a specific color using the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink combinations. Notice that the colors are named differently. Pantone color bridge is used when the flexibility to print either using a separate spot color or when converting the color to CMYK. Note that converting spot colors to CMYK color space often causes a shift in color, which brings us back to the need for standardization provided by Pantone or other color matching systems. Another quick note about the naming mechanisms of Pantone colors before we move on to implementing them. The C and the U notations in swatch books refer to coded and uncoded paper stock. If you are printing with a coated stock, one with a shiny finish, you'll want to select the Pantone equivalent with C in the name. If you're printing on uncoated stock, most printer paper is uncoated or has a matte finish, you'll want to select from the Pantone swatch book with U in the swatch names. Although you can select Pantone colors in Photoshop, those selections assume the color space of the file. RGB, CMYK or lab, unless you use a spot color channel and save the file as a layered PSD file. Saving in another format discards spot color information. In Photoshop, open channels by navigating to Window, Channels. Then go to the Flyout menu and select New Spot Channel. You'll see an additional channel appear at the bottom of the Channels panel. If the Pantone has previously been used, and the preferences haven't been cleared, the last Pantone selected will automatically populate the new spot channel selection. To select another Pantone color, click on the square below Ink Characteristics. 
the Color Libraries panel will appear and you can select a new swatch. Make sure you have the color you want, then click OK, and your spot color channel will be named with the accompanying Pantone color. Now, let's place something on the channel to see how it works. I'll select a shape from the custom shape menu. The artwork that I've drawn in Photoshop will appear in the spot color channel, but not in the Photoshop layers. Let's draw on the Photoshop layer and note the difference. First, we'll select the Pantone color. Let's select from the solid coated swatch book. Then draw the shape. It appears in the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black channels, but not as a spot color. When the artwork shifts to the left, the information in the spot color channel doesn't move. Let's draw the shape again, but this time in a separate layer. Note where the heart appears in the thumbnail of the channels. If you want the information to remain intact, you must use a spot channel and save the file in a PSD format. Remember that the spot color information is not reflected in layers, and if you save a copy of the document as a JPEG, the color information does not appear. Again, to retain the spot color information for any areas that are Pantone, you must save the document in the PSD Photoshop document format. Adobe Illustrator. Accessing the Pantone Swatchbook information in Adobe Illustrator requires that you navigate to the built-in Swatchbook libraries. First, make sure your Swatches panel is visible. If the Swatches panel isn't visible, navigate to Window, Swatches. There are a couple of options for adding a Pantone swatch to the Swatches panel. The first is by selecting the Flyout menu in the Swatches panel, then selecting Open Swatch Libraries. Then Color Books, which will show the options available for Pantones and other color swatch books. The second option is by choosing Window, Swatch Libraries, color books. Then the specific swatch book. Either method will launch a separate window showing the swatch book you have selected. You can select multiple swatch books which will be nested in the swatch book panel. Yet another way to access the Pantone swatch books is to select fill from either appearance in the properties panel or from the contextual menu at the top of the interface then use the flyout menu. You get the idea. There are many ways to access this information. Each time you select a color, it will automatically load into your swatches for later use. If you want to delete unused swatches, you can select colors individually, or you can select all unused and delete colors that may be cluttering up your swatches panel. Adobe InDesign. InDesign allows access to the Pantone Swatch Library in a similar fashion to Illustrator. From the Swatch panel, select the Flyout menu, then New Color Swatch. The New Color dialog box will appear. This is very important. Deselect the option to Name with Color Value. Printers, vendors, and other designers will be able to easily reference Pantone 214 but we'll have a harder time working with C equals 13, M equals 100, Y equals 36, K equals 0. You can also import and copy and paste elements containing Pantone colors into existing InDesign documents. If you have created a PSD file or AI file that contains swatch information, those swatches will appear in the swatch panel when imported. Lastly, in InDesign, it's good to check your Pantone colors in the Separations Preview and make sure the names correspond with colors from the Pantone Swatch Libraries. To recap, Pantone colors may be accessed in Photoshop through the Color Picker and Color Libraries, in Illustrator through Swatches in Color using Swatch Libraries, and in InDesign using Swatches, New Color Swatch, and selecting the appropriate swatch book. If you need more information on implementing Pantones or other spot colors, 
ask an ILC tutor or your instructor. We're here to help. Thanks for watching.